takes free choice right out of the mix. The reality is that here is God weeping because the very thing that He wants and desires, He can't have because of the freedom of choice. Second Peter, we know this, 1, 3, 9, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us. That means what it says, He suffers long. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You know, as we think about what we have to go through, what we are going through, let us not just be concerned about ourselves, but let's be concerned about each other, right? James chapter 5, verses 19 and 20. If God pleads with us, shouldn't we plead with one another? James chapter 5, verses 19 and 20. As we press together, we're going to have to plead for one another as well. I like the way that James puts it here. James chapter 5, verses 19 and 20. He says, Brethren, if any one among you wanders from the truth, and someone turns him back, let him know that he turns. He who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from what? Death. From death. And cover a multitude of sins. You know, more and more lately, I find myself pleading with people, do you? I never thought I would grovel like I do, but I, I'm, I'm getting desperate. I feel like, you know, you just feel like you almost have to plead. Don't, don't do this thing. Don't go this place. Don't, what are you doing? Stop. And I know we can't force people, and, and, and I understand that. And, and the Holy Spirit brings conviction. I understand that too, but He may want to bring conviction through you. And I'm done standing back and saying, that's a shame. You know, sorry, sorry that they're going that way. Oh, what more can I do? I'm going to plead. I'm going to fall at people's feet. I'm going to do whatever it takes because you know what? I am not going to look out of that city and see these people there. I will not sleep well knowing that they're lost. I will plead. I'll cry. I don't care. Because you know what? I believe this stuff to be real. It's real. This isn't a game or something I do on Saturday. This is real. People are going to leave us. People that we have labored for. I don't want to lose them. I'm tired of seeing people walk out of the faith. And I'm not saying that pleading or groveling will save them, but I'll do what it takes and I'll sleep well at night knowing that I have done all that I can do to keep them in. This is from Gospel Workers. She says, There is too much of an independence of spirit indulged among our people. This must be laid aside and there must be a drawing together of the servants of God. There has been too much of a spirit to ask, Am I my brother's keeper? Now listen to how the angel responds to her. Yes, you are your brother's keeper. You are. Thou should have watched carefully for thy brother, be interested for his welfare, and cherish a kind, loving spirit toward him. Press together, press together, press together. She says it three times. God designed that man should be open-hearted and honest, without affection, meek, humble, and with simplicity. This is the principle of heaven. God ordered it so. You remember when... Uh, well, what time is it? All right. Do you mind if we look up three more scriptures, and then then we'll close? First Thessalonians, chapter two. First Thessalonians, chapter two, verses nineteen and twenty. The labor that we are doing now, the souls that are coming into the church. This is the glory when Christ comes back again. You know, we can't offer God anything that's of any value, but we can offer Him other people. And that's a crown, friends. That's jewels in the crown. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 19 and 20, Paul says, For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Is it not even you in the presence of our, God, of our Lord Jesus Christ at His coming? That was Paul's ultimate thing that he wanted to present to God. Look, this is what I've brought you. My brothers and my sisters. That's it. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 14. 
I'll start in verse 13. For we are not writing any other things to you than what you read or understand. Now I trust you will understand even to the end, as also you have understood in us in part what that we are your boast, as you also are ours in the day of the Lord Jesus. Again, just laying down the principle that you and I are going to present each other to the Lord on that day. You know, we are integrate working with each other to present each other to the Lord. You know, when uh, Peter denied the Lord, he felt as if he had been lost forever, didn't he? And when Jesus rose from the dead and he talked to Mary, he said, go tell the disciples and Peter, right? He wanted to reassure Peter that he is still okay, that he had sensed Peter's repentance. And then they have this interaction on the shore later when, when Jesus reveals himself to them again. And Jesus asked Peter three times, just like he denied him three times. He said, do you love me? And Peter says, yes, Lord, I love you. And Jesus said, if you love me, feed my sheep. He did that three times. Do you love me? And Peter's getting, you know, kind of worked up. He says, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said it, you know, feed my sheep. Three times. And so as we close this morning, I ask you, do you love Jesus? Do you love Him? If, if your answer is yes, feed His sheep. Care for His sheep. Press together with His sheep. Do you love Him? If the answer is yes, press together. Press together. Press together. Oh